If you're the kind of person who works and plays in front of a keyboard, it's really worth considering getting something that's at least a little bit ergonomic so that you have hands when you're old. I've never had an RSI, and that's partly because I use an ergonomic keyboard at my desk at work. This is a pretty ergonomic keyboard. It's also kind of not in some way, so let's check it out. This is the the UHK, that stands for Ultimate Hacking Keyboard 60. It's a small keyboard, it's a split keyboard, and it comes with a bunch of modules and stuff because guys, just because you're going ergonomic doesn't mean it isn't a fun mechanical keyboard with lots of customization. You know it's a fun mechanical keyboard when you get the telephone cable. That's still what that's called? Curly little pigtail guy? I don't know. In the box, you get the split keyboard, which does combine but look at that in a second. You get these little guys, which appear to be click-in feet, like, oh God, look at the other one. <laughs> these are like the uh, like the stands, I think, that you can flip out to increase the uh, tilt, which you shouldn't do from an ergonomic perspective. More on that later. Also have a combined key switch puller and key cap puller, branded UHK. You also have a branded cable tie, properly fixed to this cable, which looks like it's like five feet long. Oh, it's actually USB-C to C with an adapter to A. And that's it for the box. So where does this plug in? I guess it goes into one side of this, and then the sides are connected by what they call the bridge. Yeah, this actually stretches pretty far. Oh, where does this go? Oh, there it is. On the right module, there is a USB-C port hidden in there. So you can plug into that, and then run through this little channel. Oh, she's tight, and it's in and then it runs off that way away from you. Plug that guy in, and there you have the keyboard. So that's the setup, but actually I wanna unplug that if I can, because I wanna take a bit of an exterior tour of this thing. There's a lot of info on the back here. Start with uhk.io slash start. It looks like their website is actually fairly robust. There's an arrow over here pointing to a reset button. That tells me that you can reprogram this keyboard, and if you wanna reset the factory settings, you just actually do it that way, which is kind of cool. Got these little pegs with rubber domes on them like for feet. And over here, there's kind of a list of the features. I don't know what agent means. Adaptive mode, mouse control, macro programming, copy left, repair friendly, durable, and key rollover. Agent, it's the hacker keyboard. In terms of the ergonomics of this thing, the first thing you notice that's weird about it is it's a split keyboard, and that's good for your shoulders, actually. So you can actually spread it apart like this because it's kind of awkward for us to sit like this. You naturally want to spread out, broaden the chest, you know, don't collapse your shoulders forward so much in like a hunching way. A second benefit to having the split is something called ulnar deviation. If your hands are together on a regular keyboard and they go like that, that hurts, that pinches, that can cause RSI. But as soon as you spread it, you're not anymore. There's no reason to go like this if you have this space. If it's nicer to actually, you can even go like this. Just come in totally naturally like that. Now there's two other elements to keyboard ergonomics that this, as configured, is not serving at all. One being extension and pronation. So extension, let's put these little guys on. Oh, it looks like it just goes right around this foot. I wanna make sure I put this on the right way. Oh my God, those things just really wanna fall apart. So you have some options of where you put these things. I'm gonna show you where to put them to be ergonomic. Right there in the middle. Now, usually, jeez, they're delicate, okay? Usually when you see little feet like this, they're on your keyboard and they're making your keyboard go like this. You know, they're, they're, bringing, they're raising up the edge of the keyboard that's farthest away from you. But then I learned about extension. So with any joint, uh, well, for this joint specifically, this is extension, this is flexion. It's bad for you and you'll get an RSI if you're in extension too much. And so if you actually tilt your keyboard so it's like that, you're getting more extension. You want this joint to actually just to be straight across. That's ideal. Or even a little bit like that. There they are. The reason I put them there is for the, the final dimension of ergonomics on a keyboard, which is pronation. And I think this one affects me the most. I even feel this when I'm driving in the car sometimes so I hold the steering wheel wrong. When your forearm is this way, the two bones in your forearm, which are the ulna and the radius, they actually scissor like that and they pinch. There's tissue in between them that will be pinched and they'll get like less blood flow to that tissue and that'll cause you pain. So you actually don't wanna use your keyboard like that. You wanna be like that. See that? It's very, it's pretty subtle. It's just like my hand is just maybe 30 degrees turned and that's huge. But now if I just bought this keyboard and I put those on to eliminate pronation and I'm sitting there like this, you can see I do have some extension there. What's the remedy to that? 
why it's this accessory sold separately, $75, advertised as giving you tenting, negative tilting. Look at that, see, that's, that's for, you'll actually be in flexion and positive uh, tilting, which if you're raising, I don't know, I'll try it. $75 seems kind of like a lot, but let's see what you get. Are those even the same size? One seems longer than the other. This on the website, they call it's like beech wood that's been like stained and sanded and freaking pickled and brined. It's crazy. They really want your money. They fit onto here, as you can see from this little gif, so simply. Oh, this module is actually wider than the other one because I, I guess because it has these keys. Oh my God, look at that. <laughs> you guys got to work on that part, okay? Let's say I fit that together. This is meant to just slide on here, like this. It looks so easy in the animation. I guess I'm supposed to use the hardware that comes with it. Little handle on here, it's kind of like a little purse. There it is, that looks cool, looks more complete, and still separates. Hmm, very soft, very soft on the palms. Feels good, man. Now, how does it work with these, though? And how does it add negative and positive tenting? It just seems to extend it. Okay, two feet, start simple. That's not right. <laughs> Don't do it this way. Here's the configuration with the negative tilting. That's pretty cool. Now, can I config it so I also get tenting? Take these off. Okay. Oh, no! Oh my God, they say that on there. Open and lock. There is like some arrow action on here. Okay, that solves one problem. Probably says that in the manual or something. As, I don't know if you can see this, but I have different orientations of these feet. One's going down, one's going sideways. But that's just to show you the options. This is pretty much the config I would use because I, I think that the tenting is more important than the extension. It looks pretty smart. It looks cool. There are other colors. I probably would have gotten a different color. The black looks sharp, very executive, sleek, gamery. But I gotta say, I'm partial to the mustard. Real quick mention about the switches that come with this thing. As mentioned, it comes with this, right? So that means that you can actually pull the switch right out of here. Hot swappable switches. That's awesome. Put whatever switches you want in here, as long as they're compatible with this standard configuration. What they offer on the website is kale switches, either red, brown, or blue, and either these kind of cross stem, the box stem, or the circular silent stem. Right now, there's no extra cost for the different switches. They're all the same price, but there is a footnote that says that the, particularly the silent switches may be cost more in the future. Just be aware of that. They are double shot PBT keycaps. So the light on the RGB, which this does have per key RGB, I should plug this puppy in. Uh, it'll shine right through the switch. There is screen printing for the secondary layers down there on the legend. That's not gonna be as durable, but you shouldn't be touching it as much. I'm gonna plug it in to see the lights, but more importantly, I wanna mess with these modules, which seem super cool. How do they interact with these little clicks that are on here? There's so many questions still, right after this message from our sponsor. Thanks to Enlisted for sponsoring this video. Immerse yourself in the most iconic battles of World War II with Enlisted, a free-to-play first-person shooter that blends PvP and PvE elements into one intense experience. Take command of a team of soldiers and customize their roles and loadouts to make the ultimate squad. With over 100 weapons, tanks, and aircrafts, every engagement is bound to be unique. Available on PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. And best of all, when you check out Enlisted by using the link below, you get a special bonus for you. This is a cool default lighting configuration. It's like a uh, banana lavender. You can see it says QWR up here by default. What that is is an indication of what layout you're using on your keyboard. You can actually go switch, if you hold on function two, DVO is Dvorak. Good luck, everyone. Always wanted to try it. Then you got Colmac, which is an amalgam between QWERTY and Dvorak, it's supposed to be a little more accessible. And then you switch over to going between uh, the Mac version of that. Now, let's check out these cool things. This one says, Ultimate Hacking Keyboard Module Trackball. The least sold module. 65 bucks, it goes on this side only? It looks like it only fits in this one spot. Those pipes, which are male, go into these female, and you don't have them in the same spot on this side. Cool, there's a little trackball on there now, that's funky. It doesn't click itself, but it does have two little clicky buttons here. I would say it feels a little cheaper than the rest of the keyboard. It's pretty light, kind of rattly. 
There's no satisfying click at the end. Kind of just slides linearly on the rails. One thing I look for in my ergonomic keyboards is thumb clusters. Your thumbs are your strongest digit. Makes no sense that on a regular QWERTY keyboard, you only use it for spacebar and you pretty much only have, you know, one key shared by both of them. On the keyboard that I use, I use these for like four or five buttons each. Putting mod here is, a, is probably a waste. Personally, I don't really like having to go to a second layer, which is another reason I, don't, I hate the, I hate the fact that a lot of ergo keyboards are small keyboards. Dumb, because that's not ergonomic. Ergonomic is a 10 key list, but they never make them like that. They always make them these cool little funky guys, which is great too, but I would rather not have to go onto any function layers. Like the reason I use the keyboard I have at my desk is because it has F keys. You can't get that on so many ergo keyboards. Okay, let's check out this touchpad. That's cool too. The more you can put onto the keyboard so that you don't have to reach over here for the mouse, which is pretty not ergonomic, the better. So is this compatible with this? No, it kind of looks like it goes in the same spot as the trackpad. That makes sense. They have the same role. Um, as long as I can actually, oh, look at that. I'm flipping around over there. I'm trying to click and it doesn't appear to actually click. All right, we're set up properly now with the software, which is called Agent. That's why the picture. And it's actually kind of cool. You can unplug these modules and just see it disappear. And plug it back in, and there it is. And it says left click, but unfortunately, I have found no ability to click on anything with it. So I don't know what the deal is with that. Let's see if I put the trackpad in, if those clicks will work. The, the mouse thing works no problem. This little bastard, stay there. Uh, hello? Why is my whole left side's gone? Let me plug that bridge in better. Let me redo it. Come on, left side. And my module's not showing up here either. Oh, there it is. Maybe that was the problem? Weird. Okay, so funky behavior. Uh, and let's see if I can click on stuff. Nope, even though it's mapped to left click right there. This click, that does nothing either. Uh, so weird though, because if I go back to paint, I was able to use this click. See, I can draw, but I couldn't click on anything in their software. And what if I use, I can't click on that. So what the heck, what's the logic here? Firmware, okay, now what? Is it, uh, do I have to restart things? Nope, here we go, setup, ready to go. Trackball, mouse isn't working. Just, well, it's worse now. I'm just gonna unplug, oh, I'm gonna unplug it. Oh God. Firmware update failed. Nice. Yeah, so it wasn't done. Cannot find connected device. Different USB port. Launch agent again. Cannot find your USB, please plug it in. Well, it appears we have a brick to the keyboard. It no longer uh, turns on, but this is a thing that happens apparently. So they actually have a page on their website about how to unbrick it. So all we need to do is open up the back and short a couple of little pads here. So I'm gonna unplug it. There it is. Frame come off. There's the little things we gotta jump. Oh God, stuff's already happening. So now I fix, and we're back to where we started. All right, at this point, I'm just gonna continue evaluating the other modules that I wanted to show you. Your mileage may vary as to whether or not the clicks work out of the box. Install the newest firmware from the GitHub page. I don't think it's on their website. You actually have to go to GitHub, which is stupid. Make sure it's done before you unplug it. I'm not sure that's what happened. Uh, if it does get bricked, try doing the reset, the unbricking page, it was actually pretty easy. Um, and if it gets super bricked, like ours, then good luck not having a keyboard for a couple of weeks while they do all the shipping and everything. But here's the rest, okay? This one is the track point. It's very much like the tr like the tr track ball, but it's, you know, that Lenovo nipple guy. The hell? I think I did that too rough. Here it is. <laughs> the nipple came right off. This guy on here. It's kind of weird for all of these, especially the trackpad, to use your thumb. This one? Without seeing the feedback on the screen, it feels like I'm not actually doing anything. Like it, I can't feel the joystick rocking over. Uh, it also has clicks, pretty similar to the other one. And then finally, the thing I'm most likely to get, a couple keys. This actually goes on the other side. So this is the one module we've seen where you can have it in combination with another. That's great. And as I said before, I love thumb action. So that's kind of a reach to get way over there. I probably wouldn't use these for much. I might use this for like home and end, like a seldom used kind of like destination key, you might say. 
Whereas this mod key is where I'd like to have like backspace. And this one that's right there is like something decisive like enter. Um, speaking of enter, they don't have an ISO layout like European style with, you know, the tall ass enter button. That thing's cursed. I don't blame them for not having that. Use this instead. It's so annoying and hard to get used to when your pinky reaches over to hit enter and it just doesn't. I think going the other direction is easier to learn. So, you know, adapt or die. There's another little thing on here. It's like there's a, its own little trackball right here. And does that click? It does. And that's a click too. This, dude, this has like a full three click mouse built into it. This is the best value. If they're all 65 bucks, this is like two modules in one. That's the one to get if you're on a budge. Update, all is well with the world. We got it fixed. All we did was hold the wires on, across those two little jumpers for longer, hold them for longer, and actually throw out the duration of the firmware flashing. I'm not sure if that was required, but that's what we did, and it works now. Uh, the other thing was about the clicks not working, even though they seem to be mapped in the software. We got that working too. All we did was map them to something else and then back to the clicks, and then they worked as, as uh, intended. So it's all good. User error, don't unplug it before it's done flashing the firmware, my bad. With all that considered, what are my final thoughts on this keyboard? I think it's definitely a contender for your roster of ergo gaming type keyboards. Though you don't have to be a gamer, it has a very clean look. It, it could fit in your minimalist uh, setup as well, especially if you go for the white chassis. It's a little bit expensive, yes, but honestly, you always pay premium for ergo. I don't really know why because they're wacky, I guess. But it's, it's pretty cool. The modules aren't really selling me. They're kind of awkward to use with your right thumb, especially the trackpad one. Um, but it's cool that they exist. I would probably go for the key cluster. The thing with Ergo keyboards is you have particular needs. Keyboards have lots of different dimensions of quality. So just look at five or six, consider the price, pick the one you think fits you the best. It's, it's worth looking at.